You know, if you've been following my stuff, you've heard me preach. <sighs> Low impact, high odd stands. Over and over and over. There's a reason for it. If we can go ahead and set up our ground so we can hunt the snot out of it without the deer knowing we're here, the advantages are through the flipping roof. The catch is, as you all know, that does not occur naturally very often at all, such as this example right here. What we're on, we're on a little bit of a ridge. The road, about 100 yards that way. This is an 80 that's set up like this, a 40 wide, 80 deep. <clears throat> as I said, that road's just 100 yards away. Okay, we've got a little bit of a ridge going through here. We've got a little bit of a swamp there, creating a natural travel corridor right off the bat. That's not bad. Nowhere near as good as it is on the backside though. So let's manufacture it. We've got this here ready. Went ahead last year, slapped out a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of magnum scrape drifters, trying to create a social hub. Make it so they rub and scrape a bunch up in here. That worked. They scraped like crazy. Okay, now we're gonna put that on steroids. It was a scale of one to ten, it was a five stand. Yeah, you could kill something off it, but not very good. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go up here now, and we're going to manufacture a bedding area just far enough off so that we can slip up from the road, get up in this stand, hunt it without those does up there knowing they're there. Okay, we've got food back down the ridge. So what we've just done is we've, we will create a flow. We will get deer to bed there, work the ridge, down to food, back, down the ridge in the morning, back to bedding. Afternoons or mornings, I can slip up into this stand. Guess what? If the does are doing that, you think the bucks are gonna try to stop off during the rut and check out the girls? You darn right they are. And what are they gonna do? They're gonna follow this ridge from the food to the girls, from the girls to the food. Manufacture your low impact stands. They don't happen naturally. So what you do is you look at your ground. What are some low impact access points? That road is as low impact as it gets. There's vehicles driving back and down all the time. Okay, now how can I slip in off that low impact access to a spot? Oh, well, this ridge is naturally good. 100 yards off the road. Okay, but it's good, but not great. So now how can we approve it? to make it great? How can we improve it to create the flow of deer traffic we want on this ground? I don't care if it's a road. I don't care if it's a nasty erosion ditch. I don't care if it's a creek. I don't care if it's a field that gets plowed. Most properties have areas that you can access from a low impact manner. The catch is that the stands aren't there. They're back on the backside. They're in locations where you have to blow up the woods. So that's where our habitat improvements come into play. You manufacture those high odds, low impact stands. We all know from me preaching it over and over and over that I am a huge fan of low impact, high odd stands. They don't occur naturally though. The way you end up manufacturing them is you figure out what you have for low impact access points and then you build around that. You take that five stand, you make it a 10. You do that, the deer do not hear you, they do not smell you, they do not see you and you can hunt the snot out of this 80 without them ever having a clue. <laughs>